Hi, it's Bill, the Knee Pain Guru. Today's Monday, December 9th, 2019. And we are going today we're going to talk about how come my knee pain is bad some days and others not so much. Now we did cover this, we did the same video a week ago. However, I don't know what happened. YouTube is claiming the video was taken down by the user, but um, I don't know where the video went. It's good information because it's really important to understand the complexity that is going on whenever you have knee pain. Uh, so I wanted to re-record this video, and whatever I did, I I hope YouTube would let me know what that was so I could avoid doing that again or, or figure out what's the happy medium with all of that. So make sure to give the video a thumbs up, like and subscribe to my channel, and share this video. Uh, it's, it's really important. There's a lot of people suffering with knee pain. They need this information, and they need the information because they believe they only have the options that the conventional medical model is presenting to them. So at least if they have another option, it can begin to churn in their brain that maybe going down the route of drugs, shots, surgery, painful physical therapy may not be the only option for them, that there are other options out there and that you can come to these videos, ask questions, participate in the dialogue as a way to understand what your path is. So there is not one hard, fast rule for everyone. Everyone's knee pain is created differently. Everyone's knees are created differently. We have males and females and young and old and active and non-active. So there's a lot of different, it's not a one-size-fits-all kind of thing, which is why relying on principles and understanding of how the body works is your way out of pain. Okay. So with that being said, if you have questions, comments uh, about your knees, knee pain, doctors, physical therapists, whatever that is, please put those in the live chat. It may be below. It may be on the side. If you're watching the replay of this, put it in the comments section below. I read all the comments and I respond to them based on the quality of the questions. And actually... For, the, for this video today, this was a question that was submitted on my YouTube channel. So this gentleman <coughs> was writing in, two months after total knee replacement, I have some okay days and some days where it's agony. Yet, how come such a drastic difference from day to day? And it really exemplifies how disconnected the average person is with their needs or what's going on with their body. Um, and especially if you've had, <coughs> excuse me, if you've had a knee replacement surgery, the level of disconnect goes up exponentially because you've had to ignore or you've chosen to ignore what's going on with your knee with your body. So you got to suck it up, push through the pain, no pain, no gain. Pain is weakness leaving the body. We have these things going through our mind when we experience the pain. It's like we got to go and push it down so as not to feel it. So it doesn't interfere with our daily life or whatever is going on. The reality of it is that pain is going on underneath the hood, so to speak. And what ends up happening is the body, after a while, won't tolerate it. The pain level continues to go up. The body compensates. We continue to ignore. And eventually, after a period of time, the body continues to knock on the door until it's so loud, you can't ignore it anymore. And then you're going to the doctor. You're essentially getting the bones in your legs sawed off and replaced with plastic and metal. So there's a level of disconnect that needs to happen both physically and in the psychology of a person who has chosen to have a knee replacement surgery. 
So it's important to understand that when there's that disconnect, we're not the, the <clears throat> that person is not connecting the things that they're doing in their daily life with the pain that they feel. It's like some random thing that's happening where I got pain some days and not so much others. But the person that has chosen to have a knee replacement surgery, that's like the end game for the medical model. Those that are <laughs> at the beginning diagnosed with a knee pain or a knee strain or had a knee surgery to repair a ligament or meniscus or something that happened, and this goes on over time. So this ignoring takes place over time until the body can't deal with it anymore. And then finally, the pain is so great, you're sitting in front of the doctor. It's like, okay, yeah, let's just have a knee replacement if it'll make the pain go away. So this gentleman is already on the other side of that. They've been all of that, ignored it for years, and now had a knee replacement and they're still having issues. So it's not the be all end all. It's not the great wonderful thing that you would see ads and, and <laughs> articles about that it's the solution for someone with knee pain. So with that being said, we have to understand that the body is a, is a, a series of systems, meaning you drink water. It's part of a system that goes into what makes your knee joint up. You eat food. It goes in through the system and it processes what comprises your knee joint. The water and the food both play a role in how, what happens in the knee. How much exercise you have, how much sleep you have, whether you sit, whether you stand, whether you walk a lot. So all of these factors begin to affect the system as to how it feels from day to day. You feel great one day because you drank a lot of water. All of a sudden, you drank a little too much wine the night before. Your body got dehydrated. You drank a cup of coffee to get going the next morning. And now your knees really ache because your body's dehydrated. You didn't connect it with the fact that you didn't drink water. You drank too much wine, and then you drank coffee the next morning, which all dehydrate the body. So now your knees hurt, and you're not connecting it with what happened the day before or that morning. Uh, there, there are so many different factors that the body is adjusting to. It's shifting and changing and adjusting to weather patterns. It's affecting it. <clears throat> Gravity affects it. The stuff you see on uh, television and on the internet, and social media, and newspapers and things like that create stress and tension. Your nervous system is constantly trying to process this information, which affects the tension in the system, your body as a system. So I'm, I just made a list. This was a quick list of all of the different factors that go into it. You have accidents, you have injuries, you got surgeries, you got trauma. Who hasn't fallen off of the swing when they were little or uh, slipped and fell on the ice or got into a car accident? The weather affects it. Um, hydration, water affects how the knees feel. Nutrition affects how the knees feel. You eat good food, you eat bad food. All of it has an effect on the resources that your body needs to repair itself. Supplementation. Do you need supplements into your diet that will help the body heal and recover? Um, exercise or lack thereof. And it's a little bit of a catch-22 situation when you have pain. So exercise needs to be done, the right type of exercise first, with the right timing as to when you're capable of doing the exercise in a manner which allows the body to recover. You have stress, you have financial stress, relationship stress, family stress, children, parents, grandparents, the holidays are upon us, 
job stress. So all of those affect the tension in the nervous system, which you're relaxed and you're feeling pretty good. Things probably won't bother you so much. You get real stressed or it's, it's a duration over a long period of time. Let's say a grandparent in hospice or a, a close friend or family member in hospice that you see them lying in the bed and there's nothing you can do. That creates tension and stress in your nervous system that affects what's going on in your body. The knees are just the weakest link in the series of tension from the head to the feet. It's important to understand this. Um, then there's internal pressure. And what I'm talking about internal pressure is when we have our own agenda on getting the knees to heal. I have lots of people, they like running, they like playing softball, they like playing golf, tennis, or whatever that is. Clients that I work with that aren't able to put that activity on the shelf long enough to allow the time their knees need to heal. So that internal pressure creates stress that pushes them to do stuff that actually puts the knee into more pain. And they wonder why their knees hurt. There is a disconnect. They call it cognitive dissonance. Uh, we already talked about advertising, TV, social media, political stuff, um, thoughts of self-worth. A lot of people have... <laughs> people that I've talked to, they don't believe they deserve to be out of pain. That's a tricky one. So that they, they will do stuff, they will create situations and scenarios that will actually put their knees back into pain. And on the surface, it's like, oh, my knees are in pain, but they're actually doing the things that are setting themselves up to be in pain. And that's, I touched on that a little bit with those people that can't let their knees rest enough to recover. So it's a pattern and it's not getting out of knee pain is not necessarily a physical challenge. It's a mental and emotional challenge because the person is unable to look at the source of what is creating the pain in the knees. Uh, there's lots of emotions, anger, sadness, depression, frustration, irritation, Irritation at the knees, as well as all of that that's going on in your life. So those, all of those different things play different roles in the system. Your body as a system, it cannot be isolated. We cannot just look at the knees in a vacuum and think we're going to get the knees out of pain by just exercising the stuff out of them. It doesn't make sense. It's an antiquated way of looking at the body. It's a compartmentalized way of looking at the body. But if you want sustainability and longevity of your knee joints, it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. So the gentleman, when I put all of those factors into account, when we look at what's going on in the knees, and they say two months after total knee replacement, I have some okay days and some days where it's agony. How come such a drastic difference from day to day? Looking at that question with all of those factors taken into consideration, it's a much larger conversation if the person wants a solution. Perfect example. I had a, I had a gentleman yesterday that asked me a question, and I basically told him, you need to, you need to work on the question because what he was asking me what he was asking me essentially was to address osteoarthritis, you have surgery or water. When you look at all those different factors, it's, it's a poor question at best. We have to ask better questions of ourselves, of the medical professionals we're working with, doctors, physical therapists, whoever that may be. And what that does is it raises the bar. So we're not just tolerating and doing blindly what a medical professional says. They have their area of expertise and understanding in a very limited scope. Very limited scope. If something is broken or torn in the knee, they're the people I want to go with. 
If I'm just dealing with pain, that's what happens. A lot of people are dealing with pain on the other side of an accident, an injury, a surgery, a trauma. In some cases, there's nothing broken or torn in the knee. Nothing. The knee is normal. The knee is fine, yet they can't give a reason why the knee hurts. And then you have other people like those that have had knee replacement surgeries that think it was going to be a solution, that they were, it was going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread on the other side of that. If it'll just get me out of pain, there isn't the, the foundational work that needed to be done to address all of those tension patterns that are going on in the body to get you the flexibility and mobility that you're wanting in the knees out of pain. So, Okay, we got some uh, people that are commiserating here. Uh, got lower back pain now, eight weeks after total knee replacement, and really bad, but wears off during the day. I was wondering if it's due to lumbar injection when I had surgery. See, Ronald, th th like your your perspective is so tunnel vision that if you want injections, great. Go get injections. My dad is going to get tons of injections in his shoulders, in his knees, in his lower back. they talking to the doctors about replacing another joint. And that that if that's the model you're working with, then run with that model. What I have to say, what I have to offer is not going to be a very, very much value to you because you can't look at the body as having the ability to heal itself, that it's this interconnected series of systems and pulleys and levers, and then think that if we're just going to numb the pain or going to cut it out, that it's not going to have an effect on the other part of the body, just isn't realistic. So what you have lower back pain because your body is compensating from the knee replacement surgery. You did have the bones in your leg cut off and replaced with plastic and metal. It has an effect on other parts of the body. I have a doctor, friend of mine in southern Indiana, that she had both of her knees done at the same time. And then a few years later, she had both of her hips done. And now she's looking at having her shoulders done. Now, why is that? Because the body has to put this tension somewhere, has to put the stress, has to put the accident, the injury, the trauma that it's been through somewhere else. So it begins to create another weakest link somewhere else in the body. The knees, now you can't feel them because it's plastic and metal. So then the hips and the lower back compensate, which is exactly what's going on with you, Ronald is your hips and lower back are compensating because of what was not addressed and not dealt with in the knees to begin with. Now, this isn't all like bad that you've had um, a knee replacement surgery. I've been very successful with individuals who have had knee replacement surgeries. However, it requires them to do significantly different types of work. There's mental and emotional work that needs to come with the physical component. And if that person is not willing to look at the mental and emotional piece that ties in with all of that, well then you're going to get more of what you've been what you've been dealing with. Uh yeah, life with Jimmy just had a total knee replacement nine weeks ago. And, yeah. And <laughs> people who don't have knee pain don't come to my videos. Only people with any pain want to watch my videos because they're looking for a solution. They're looking for something, and most of the time, they want a quick fix. They want to think, oh, well, I'll just spend $30, $40 for something to reverse something that's been jacked up for years or decades. Just not realistic. It's a process. It's a path. It's a journey to get on with a different way of thinking and a different way of understanding the body. It's not for everybody. And I'd encourage those that do not have that mentality, who would not like to look at that mentality, 
then stop <laughs> stop and click off and watch some other video from a physical therapist or a doctor or something like that about knee pain. So, anyhow, you like the information, give the video a thumbs up, like and subscribe to my channel, The Knee Pain Guru. Uh, share, like, like the video. <laughs> share it with your friends that limp because people like Ronald – um, Ronald and Life with Jimmy are on the other side of the ultimate solution the medical model has to offer, and they're struggling. Ronald has uh, it's going into his lower back, and Life with Jimmy is dealing with range of motion. Yeah, and and that's a there's a real disconnect between people tell you how good people tell you how good you're doing because they society is Hold on, there we go. Uh, people tell you how good you're doing because society in general sets the bar so very low on what the expectations are. You'll, you'll see a lot of people, and, and I'll talk to my dad. Believe me, the whole scenario about shoemaker's kids have holes in their shoes, my father doesn't hear anything I say. doesn't matter how many professional athletes or doctors that I work with or Olympic-level athletes or how many people I've got out of pain or you know, whatever testimonials I could show them. There's a cognitive dissonance, a disconnect between – what I know, understand, and believe to be true that I've experienced over the past 21 years since my own knee injury and what he's dealing with. And that's what happens a lot of times in getting people out of pain is not actually the getting them out of pain, like increasing range of motion. Range of motion has more to, in the knee has more to do with what's going on in the hips and lower back than in the knee. There's that. Relieving the tension in the hips and the lower back is a crucial part of getting the knee out of pain. Once again, it's the body's an interconnected series of pulleys and levers. So we have to look at these other components and we have to become aware of how the knees are connected with the hamstrings, the quads, the calves, the shins, the hips, the lower back, the ankles, and the feet. And if we leave those out of the equation, we're leaving a lot that isn't being addressed. So for those that want an action step, head over to my website, thekneepainguru.com. Begin working with one of my programs. Get on the newsletter list. I send out emails on a daily basis to begin educating you to change your mind on how you look at what's going on in your knees. And then get into one of my programs. Start out with the comfort zone. If you're feeling real, like you really want to make this happen, get on the knee club on ramp, which where we'll work for two weeks and get you some results, get you some relief. And then at the end of that period, you could say, Hey, that's good. I'm good. I want to work with this for a while. Or you can work on one of my work with one of my other programs, upgrade from there to either my private or group coaching programs to continue getting support as to what to do and how to do it when you feel tension in your hips and lower back, when you're struggling with range of motion in your knee, when you're dealing with scar tissue, when you're dealing with pain or stiffness or achiness or it's waking you up at night, whatever that is. So you have some actionable steps. I will put these in the, um, there'll be those little screens on the video. I'll edit that here in a little bit. You can work with that one. Hopefully, we'll get we'll get some interaction, uh, and YouTube will be pleased with how my presentation was today. They won't take the video down. So, okay, we do these videos uh, when you're right. When I try to push the range of motion in the knee, I can feel it in my hip. I think the problem I'm trying hard. Well. All people with knee pain try too hard. All people with knee pain try too hard. And they're trying hard at the wrong things. 
I had a, 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 a martial arts instructor that told, that told us, it was at a seminar, that said, I can give you something your body will like and your mind won't. Or I can give you something your mind will like and your body won't. You can't have both. And if you think about that, when you create comfort in the physical body, your body will like it. Your mind won't because you're going to struggle with the mind and the emotions that are attached to the comfort that you're creating and releasing of tension in the nervous system. Now, physical therapy, the conventional medical model will give you lots of stuff your mind will like. Do these sets and reps. Leg raises, leg curls, leg extensions. Squats, calf raises. They'll give you something your mind will like, but your body won't because it puts you in pain for days afterwards. You're struggling with your own tension. Your ability, Life with Jimmy, your ability to flex your knee is, I need to say that differently. The tension in your hip is preventing you from accessing the full range of motion your knee replacement has to offer. That's what I'm saying. So the, the tension in your hips and lower back, your body protecting the knee from everything it's been through, your body is protecting itself from experiencing that. If you were to experience everything, your all the pain that your knees had to offer, you'd pass out. So what ends up happening is the body creates tension in other areas to compensate for the pain that it's feeling and the pain that it's experiencing. Okay, that's enough for today. You're either going to take action or you won't. It's either the timing's right for you or you won't. Head over to my website, thekneepainguru.com. Get on my newsletter list. Sign up for one of the programs. Begin getting help and support. And um, we're going to sign off for today. Next video will be Thursday. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the channel, as well as uh, share the video with your friends. Okay. Thank you so much. Bill Paravano, The Knee Pain Guru, going to sign off for today. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you on the next video.